at certain things about the computer and the audio system that I told you do not comprehend. Um, but we are very happy to have among us uh, Mr. Uh, Sugat Chaturvedi, and he's going to um, uh, talk to us about his paper, which is Words Matter, Gender, Jobs, and African Behavior. So without wasting any more time, I'll just ask him to go ahead with it. Sugat. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for inviting me. And let me just share my screen. Yeah, so uh, this paper is titled Words Matter, Gender, Jobs and Applicant Behavior. And this is joint work with Kanika Mahajan from Ashoka University and Zara Siddiqui from University of Bristol. Uh, I myself am a PhD student at ISI Delhi. And the paper basically draws its, its motivation from the idea that there are gender disparities in labor force participation rates and wages globally. And this is especially high in India, where in 2017-18, the female labor force participation rate was only 21% for urban women. On the other hand, this was 79% for men. Now, this disparity can exist due to supply side factors as well as due to employer discrimination. Uh, I say supply side factors because there are gender differences along dimensions such as competitiveness, propensity to negotiate, aversion to ambiguity, uh, uncertainty, and risk. Uh, so even when there is not, th there doesn't exist an employer bias, even then the application rates of men and women can differ. So this paper uh, is basically studying what determines job search and applicant behavior of candidates. And what we do, we first study employers. Uh, we basically study employers' explicit and implicit gender preferences using online job portal data in India. First, we study how are they associated with wages. And then we study how do they affect gender mix of applicants. And in doing so, we use several machine learning techniques. First of all, we use a short text topic model to classify job titles into uh, occupation categories. There, there are around, uh, there can be a large number of job titles and in order to uh, reduce them to several occupation categories, we use a clustering approach. Uh, secondly, we infer implicit gender associations from job titles and descriptions. And these implicit gender associations basically help even when there's no explicit gender request made by an employer. And next, we use uh, research in explainable artificial intelligence to derive stereotypical words associated by employers with each gender. And finally, we directly infer which words matter for female applicant share. And this is of direct policy relevance because, you know, it can, this, the generated word list can be used to modify content in job ad in such a way so that more women apply to those jobs. Uh, the key takeaway of this paper is that we show how text contained in job ad matters for job search and application behavior of candidates. Our main findings are that explicit preferences are more likely to be uh, uh, given for low skill jobs. And they're also associated with age requirements and beauty requirements. And when we focus on application behavior, then we see that explicit female preferences increase the share of female applications. On the other hand, when an employer makes an explicit male uh, request, then that decreases the share of female applications. So this means that there is some compliance with the requests of employers, but this compliance is far from, far from perfect. And then we see uh, uh, focus on implicit preferences in jobs where no explicit gender requests are made. And we find that text, which is predictive of female preference, significantly lowers advertised wage. And then the next result is that implicit femaleness increases female applicant share, while implicit maleness uh, decreases uh, female applicant share or increases male applicant share. And then we go on to which words matter. And we find that words which indicate lower job flexibility, which, which are associated with male jobs, have higher wages and lower female applicant share. And on the other hand, stereotypical female hard skills are associated with lower wages and increased female applicant share. 
So our work is related to a large literature on gender disparities in labor market and discrimination. And Newmark 2018 has a Journal of Economic Literature Review, which discusses this literature at length. And our work is also uh, closely related with the literature that studies sorting into jobs by gender, which means that women avoid uh, competitive jobs or they avoid negotiating when uh, accepting job offers. Uh, so all this literature has been discussed by Liebrandt and List and Flory, Liebrandt and List. Uh, and finally, our work is related to the literature on gender preferences in job ads using job portal data. And this literature is relatively recent. Uh, for China and Mexico, there are Helicitor et al. and Kun et al. papers. Uh, in the case of India, there's a Chaudhry et al. paper. They basically look at the gender preferences in job ads, but they don't have applicant data, so they don't look at application behavior of candidates. Uh, our data is basically from uh, an online Indian job portal, and it comprises all the job ads posted on the portal between 24 July 2018 and 25th February 2020. This portal caters mostly to young, urban, and educated job seekers, and we exclude ads in cases when the application window is less than a day or more than four months. Uh, when the job is located outside India or across multiple Indian states, and we exclude duplicate jobs or jobs where, are, where there are no male or female applicants, or when there's no explicit mention of education and experience requirement, and jobs where we are unable to obtain an occupational classification uh, using the topic model. So our final sample basically comprises 160,000 job ads to which over a million job seekers applied. <clears throat> now, in order to infer gender preferences, since the gender, there's no separate field where employers can signal their gender preferences to potential employees. Uh, so they generally note their gender preferences in job title or job description. So we text search job title and description and words which indicate an explicit female preference, such as female, females, women, women, girl, girls, we label them as F jobs. So uh, then uh, words indicating explicit male preference, when these words such as male, males, man, men, guy, guys, boy, boys, gent, and gents are present, then we label them as M job. And then there are some job ads which include words related to both the genders, uh, but most have no gender related words. And we label these as end jobs or neutral jobs where no explicit gender request is made. Overall in this data set, 7.7% job ads exhibit explicit gender preference. There are 4.2% job ads which have female preference and 3.5% have male preference. So slightly more jobs have female than male preference on this particular portal. Uh, so, in line with the, the portal, portal catering to young urban job seekers, 51% uh, jobs require graduate degree and two thirds require less than one year of experience. So the jobs are targeted towards freshers. The average advertised wage is around 2.2 lakhs. Uh, so this is uh, uh, slightly higher than the average wage in India. 9% uh, jobs have an age requirement in their mentioned in the job text and 6% have words related to beauty where they require a person to be good looking or pleasant or uh, 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 having a good smile and so on. And similarly, 86% candidates have a graduate degree and over 75% have less than a year of experience. The average age of a candidate is around 24 years on this portal, and 35% of candidates are women. So this, this is the word cloud of job title, and this is where it gets interesting. The jobs which have female preference, these are jobs such as office executive or front desk job or telecaller jobs or office assistant jobs. And then when, when, when and the jobs which have an explicit male preferences, are jobs like delivery boy, uh, 
business development executive, sales executive, office boy, cargo supervisor. So already you can see just based on word clouds, there's a stark difference in type of jobs which have female requests and male requests. <clears throat> and if we look at uh, wage distributions for jobs which have uh, male preference or female preference, then the red one here uh, depicts female preference jobs and the wage distribution is slightly to the left of the jobs which have a male preference or neutral preference. And when we compare it to wage distributions by uh, gender, uh, according to the periodic labor uh, force survey, PLFS, then we see that uh, the, there are large wage gaps uh, between employed men and employed women. And so the explicit requests and posted wages do not see, don't seem to explain the entire wage disparity. And there's, there has to be some effect of some implicit biases or implicit stereotypes, uh, which affect candidates application behavior or hiring rate. And this is what, what something from the applicant side will explore. So implicit femaleness uh, in our paper is uh, defined. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so what about the riskiness of jobs? So is there any measure of that? So generally uh, more risky jobs, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say a coal miner, that, that would involve more risk, right? That would be a more male dominated profession. So to cover for the risk, you pay more wages, I guess. So is there any measure of uh, risk associated with the job? Uh, in this paper, we don't particularly focus on the risk as okay. such. But you know, uh, those dimensions will come into play in certain things such as night shifts where- Exactly, the delivery boy, so those exactly. things. So, exactly, okay. But, okay. but we don't explicitly measure for risk in this paper, but okay. there are gender dimensions which we are basically able to capture that there, there's a particular job which is stereotypically associated with women okay. uh, for whatever reason and that affects the application behavior of women. Okay, okay. Uh, let us come back. So once you do your uh, uh, results, right. we can talk about it. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so, okay, so that, uh, sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, in this comparison, uh, what are you doing to sort of uh, equalize the kind of jobs? So you're, uh, you're comparing the uh female preference and male preference but they might be completely different jobs right exactly so what we do uh is that we'll we'll be that's a that's actually a great question and i wanted to touch upon that point a bit later but what we do is that we use topic modeling to cluster jobs based on titles into occupation categories so then by including occupation fixed effects we are able to compare jobs which are within the same state and within the same occupation. So there are bo both kinds of differences cross across occupation differences as well as within occupation differences. And therefore by uh, including occupation fixed effects, we can see within occupation differences as well. Uh, so we define implicit femaleness of a job as the probability of making a female request given the job text. And similarly, implicit maleness is defined as a probability of making a male request given the job text. And we use supervised machine learning approach to infer femaleness and maleness based on job text. And this allows us to get the using the information on explicit gender requests to get associations of femaleness and maleness for jobs which do not have an explicit gender request as well. So for, for example, uh, FP will be high for a job such as beautician, person secretary and school teacher, and MP will be high for a job like cargo loader, delivery executive and network engineer. And, uh, I'd just like to add that FP and MP, as uh, Ritiman pointed out, vary within occupation as well. So uh, 
and this is something which i'll discuss a bit later in the paper so now we focus on how job titles can be used to get occupation categories so job titles can provide disaggregated occupation classification because they capture not only the specialization but also the hierarchy within a particular job so for example merinesky and wolthoff paper they use uh, job titles to man get a manual categorization of occupation based on words contained in the job title uh, we on the other hand use unsupervised unsupervised machine learning uh, we use a gibbs sampling dirichlet mixture model to probabilistically classify jobs which are semantically similar uh, uh, into 483 occupation categories and these results are robust to alternative manual clustering of job titles with 747 disaggregate occupation categories now compared to this manual clustering the unsupervised machine learning approach ensures that you get some degree of dimensionality reduction so for example uh, english transcriber and japanese translator based on words because they don't share any common words between them they can't be assigned to may any uh, the same cluster by just looking at words we also have to see whether there are some other jobs which come in the same context whether there is a semantic similarity between these words so these two jobs are assigned the same cluster in the gsdmm algorithm as they are linked together by the job title transcriber translator so all these jobs get the same cluster uh so now uh, on to our empirical specification to study when the explicit gender preferences or explicit gender requests are made we use two alternative dependent variables uh we take a uh, y fm igst which takes value 1 if there's an explicit male or female preference and it takes value 0 otherwise now in y igst i refers to the job ad J refers to the occupation obtained via GSDM model. S uh, refers to the state, and T refers to a month year. So this captures the existence of a gender request, and then we have uh, the next uh, dependent variable, which is Y I G S T M, uh, which also captures the direction of gender request. It takes value minus one if there's an explicit female preference. It takes value zero if there's no preference. and it takes value one if there's an explicit male preference uh and then we control for a lot of job ad specific uh, variables we also include occupation state if state fixed effects and month year fixed effects to allow us to make comparison within the same occupation and then standard errors are uh, estimated assuming correlation of of observations within an occupation and state so we do clustering at the occupation and state level now our first result is that there's a negative skill targeting relationship uh, uh so basically if you focus on column 3 which is our main specification in this case it uses month and occupation times fixed occupation times state fixed effects so we see that gender request any gender request is more likely to be made in jobs requiring higher education requirements now the comparison point here is the job ads for which the education requirement is less than senior secondary and also we see that explicit requests are more likely to be made when there's an age requirement present in job ad or when there's a beauty requirement in job ad and then we find a similar negative skill targeting relationship when focusing on male requests made and in this case we find that beauty requests are more likely to be made for jobs requesting women rather than men and age requirements are more likely to be present for jobs requesting men now all these things are quite interesting and they're quite intuitive as well uh, also when we think of negative skill targeting it's the idea that uh, it's based on the theory that when there's a high skill jobs the applicant pool is small so employers do not want to miss out on the applicants uh, but on the other hand uh, when they have a gender preference uh, in low skill jobs they can exhibit that gender preference because there are a lot of low skilled applicants so they do not lose out 
on much by making these gender requests. So now we look at the applicant behavior in response to explicit gender request. And again, we use a similar specification, uh, but now the dependent variable is the total number of applicant applications to a job ad, or it can be the share of female applicants to a job ad. And we focus on uh, whether an ad has an explicit female preference. And also we want to look at the effect of an ad having an explicit male preference. And we find that there's an imperfect compliance with employer's request. Uh, so the first result is that the female preference reduces the total number of occupations sub, uh, substantially. So across occupation, it reduces the number of applications by 20. And this is high given that the app, uh, average number of applications to a particular job ad is 40. And when we include occupation fixed effects and control for wages, then mm, female preference reduces the number of applications by five. And all these results are statistically significant at 1% level. Uh, whereas there's no significant effect of male preference on the total number of applications made to a job ad. And when we look at the share of female applications, we find that female preference, indicating a female preference, increases the share of female applications by 15.5 percentage points. And making a male request decreases the share of uh, female applicants by around 9.5 percentage points. These effects are quite large, given that the share of female applications is around 30% uh, per job. So on an average, so this effect represents 50% of the mean and this effect represents 30% of mean. So what we learn out of this is that there is compliance with the gender requests of the employer, but that is not perfect. Now, uh, we want to look at how implicit associations might matter and how they affect the advertised wages. So we use, again, we use a similar specification with occupation time state fixed effects. But in this case, the dependent variable is the log of advertised wage. And FP measures implicit femaleness, while MP measures implicit maleness. <clears throat> And here, first, if you focus on this neutral job, we estimate the previous specification separately for F jobs, N jobs, and M jobs. And first, if you focus on the neutral jobs, then you see that even implicit femaleness is associated with a very high wage penalty, while implicit maleness is also associated with a wage penalty. But this wage penalty is much higher for implicit femaleness. And the difference between these two coefficients is statistically significantly different. Uh, the patterns are similar for F jobs and M jobs, but uh, in some cases, the difference between these two, that, dis that disappears. Now, when we focus on the applicant behavior and how that responds to implicit requests, uh, so, there we, uh, so this graph basically shows the effect of implicit femaleness for neutral jobs where no gender preference is uh, made explicit. Uh, this is the black line. The male preference jobs are blue and the female preference jobs are red. So first of all, we see that for every level of femaleness, the, the jobs which, with, which have female preference have higher share of female applications. Uh, and then we see that for male uh, preference jobs, implicit femaleness does not uh, really increase female applicant share for a large range of values. And, but for the jobs which have no gender preferences, implicit femaleness also increases the female applicant share as the, as, and the same happens in jobs which have uh, explicit female preference. And if you notice carefully, this gap widens 
when the gender association of a job ad are more fluid, right? And when we focus on maleness, then again, we see similar patterns, but then here we see that explicit uh, male preferences are made, then the share of male applicants is higher. And again, implicit maleness increases the share of male applicants for neutral jobs and for jobs which have a male preference. But we don't see any effect for jobs which have female preference. Excuse me, can I just ask a question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so the, this question is about your uh, the femaleness, uh, the one that has femaleness on the x-axis. Why does that, uh, the blue curve, why does it bump up like that from about 0.8 onwards? Actually, we have very few observations within this range which have very high female associations. And oh. if, you, if you notice this, uh, these uh, standard errors, they, are, they start to explode at this point. So the I difference so you between have fewer observations. So so the difference between this and this point is not significantly different. It's it's probably coming out because of a few observations which which might be outliers. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So what we learned here is that when gender associations are more fluid, in that case, the explicit preferences matter the most. So the implicit preferences and explicit requests are both sort of complementary. So now we focus on stereotypes. Uh, there's a literature in social psychology, which basically talks about the fact that words in a job ad matter for gender composition of applicants. There's a very nice study by Born and Taris, which was followed by Gotcher, Friesen and Kay. And they show that once you for similar job ad, once you change the catch words or keywords, then the, the association made by students on or potential applicants on that job ad, that changes. So they start to associate the same job with women or men, depending on how it is phrased. <clears throat> and, uh, but these are not real life uh, job experiments which show how applicant behavior changes. And then there's a literature which shows that stereotypes also affect behavior because uh, in certain cases, the employees can, can, can internalize those stereotypes held by employers. So in, in here, we identify stereotypical words in job ads based on these explicit requests by employers. And we do this by using the Lime algorithm, which was given by Ribeiro et al. in the machine learning literature. Now, the big problem with machine learning, uh, which has been the topic of discussion since a long time, has been that uh, it's, it basically functions like a black box where you know that there is some result, the predictability is good, but you don't understand why that model is performing in a certain way. So, we use Lime algorithm, which gives contribution of words in job text towards employers' gender preferences. And it also increases our faith in the machine learning model to explain why a model, why the model is making certain predictions. So for each observation, uh, Lime algorithm uh, is makes, uh, so Lime algorithm proceeds as, as follows. For each observation, make a small perturbation in the input X in our case, that means randomly removing words in a job ad. Then we obtain predictions returned by the ML model for the modified set of job ads. And then we weight the observations by distance from the original instance. So for example, if two words are removed, then the distance will be higher and that observation will get a lower weight. And then we train an interpretable surrogate model on the data set with variations to get the contribution uh, of every word. Now, surrogate model here is means that uh, surrogate model is an explainable model, which and this way we get the get the contribution of each and every word in towards male or female requests. And if if this is technically a bit uh, difficult to catch, then let me just show you a heat map visualization which will make things a lot more intuitively appealing. So 
in in these examples the panel a has jobs which have female preference and panel b has jobs which have male preference so the first and second jobs in both the panels are same same within the same occupation so uh, the female preference job and now the blue words they indicate relevance towards the male class so you can think of them as uh, male stereotypes or male oriented words and the red ones are the female stereotypes or female oriented words they don't necessarily have to be stereotypes these are just gendered words so uh, when ha uh, when software trainee uh, sorry job... i have a i have a small question yeah. how do you identify so how are you identify the male stereotype words and the female stereotype words how are you distinguishing between the two beforehand you're distinguishing between the two uh so we don't do that manually just let me get back to this for identifying this these male and stereotype word male and female stereotype words we use this lime algorithm ah, okay, and okay. this basically returns the score of every word towards male and female class i see so and, for example okay okay go ahead yeah yeah okay so for example i mean if if a certain word has a male association uh then that will be captured by this lime algorithm and then it will give us a high score in maleness okay so for example in this case uh, red words have female associations uh, for example personality or the accounting software tally or basic computer skills these are red in this job and they are associated with female female femaleness while for the same software trainee job when the job involves uh, working in rotational shifts and that is uh, quite highly blue then then that is basically a male preference job so this very nicely shows that how even within the same occupation a change in uh, the language or certain set of job requirements change the maleness or femaleness of a job similarly for business development manager if you look at wheeler which indicates traveling requirement that is very highly associated with men but for when the candidate has to look like air hostess and i mean there are so many jobs which have weird kind of descriptions then that is associated with female preference so uh let me just move on so we use uh, around 4000 words which occur at least 10 times in uh close to 14000 job ads which with explicit gender preference and we manually classify these words into four categories which are hard skills soft skills personality slash appearance and job flexibility so hard skills are software skills or hardware skills driving typing skills etc while soft skills are communication or interpersonal skills and then there are personality or appearance related words and job flexibility which relates to job timings travel requirements work from home uh then we obtain the median relevance score returned by the lime algorithm for f and m classes as i mentioned that the lime algorithm gives the relevance scores which indicates the association with male or female preferences of the employer and we take the difference between the median scores uh, for the may, uh, female and male classes so then uh, the median f minus median m if that is uh, positive then the net score reflects contribution towards female requests and if that is negative then the net score reflects contribution of that word towards male requests uh, we have to take the median because the score of a particular word might vary depending on the context in which that word occurs so now here i uh, i'm listing the top uh, 20 words up to top 20 words in each category so when you look at hard skills then clearly beautician related skills are uh, have are female uh, associated uh, and then there are skills such as tally which is an accounting software basic computer skills hashtags uh, uh microsoft office word and so on uh they are associated with women while hardware skills and more technical skills such as sql machine learning uh working with scanners uh, repairing scanners uh, dmat these are associated with men 
and then we look at soft skills then we see that the skills that are associated with women by employers they are more like communication skills and verbal communication skills convincing coordinating etiquette so this is in line with the existing literature as well while on the other hand for men these skills are uh, negotiation pitch liaison supervise persuading uh, motivating so there's a big difference and then when it comes to personality then being punctual presentable patient smile smiling confidence uh, being pleasant polite these are associated with women but on the other hand the uh, different sort of uh, personality traits which are less associated with beauty such as being honest uh, calm impressionate passionate those are associated with men and again when it comes to job flexibility <coughs> when it comes to job flexibility then more flexible jobs which involve working from home or skype they are associated with women but on the other hand traveling working in night shifts and relocation they are associated with men so now for each job ad we want to construct a gender category score so for that we sum the median word contribution towards f and m jobs for five categories hard skills soft skills personality flexibility and the fifth category is others we take the difference between the two sums for femaleness and maleness to get a net score uh, for each category for each job so for example you'll get a net score for a particular job for hard skills a net score for soft skills a net score for personality and so on so then for that particular job ad uh, the femaleness is given by the absolute value of this net score if that net score is greater than 0 and it takes zero otherwise and maleness is given by the absolute value of net score if that net score is less than 0 and zero otherwise and then scores in each gender category are then standardized so this way we have 10 scores uh eight of those scores are of interest to us which are uh, maleness and hard skills femaleness and hard skills maleness and soft skills femaleness and soft skills and so on and then we look at which categories matter for wages so in the case of the n jobs that is the most interesting category we see that femaleness and hard skills is associated with a wage penalty while maleness and hard skills is associated with a wage premium uh, this is also true for maleness and soft skills uh, personality attributes are both related with a wage premium and then male flexibility which basically refers to less flexible jobs that that is also associated with a wage premium and these effects are slightly attenuated uh, when we include an occupation time state fixed effects so within an occupation the effects are smaller but they are still highly significant and then when we look at uh, again just focusing on the neutral jobs then when we look at which categories matter for female applicant share then we see that female hard skills they increase female applicant share and male flexibility related words they decrease female applicant share so if you think about it female hard skills they increase female share but they are associated with a wage penalty while male male hard skills have a wage premium and then jobs requiring travel relocation or night shifts they attract a wage premium but fewer women apply to those jobs so that means that uh, women have more willingness to pay for certain job attributes and for more flexible jobs and then we do uh, several robustness tests our uh, results are robust to all of these using alternative manual classification comparing jobs within the same firm within the same occupation within the same state uh, controlling for candidate characteristics and taking contextual gender category scores and now it may be of direct interest to understand from the applicant side which words matter so the gender notions of employers and candidates may not completely overlap so it's important to know 
which words directly contribute or which words are most important in directly in contributing to increase female applicant share, especially for job ads where there are no gender preferences. So we regress female applicant share on job characteristics and occupation time state fixed effects for N, N jobs, and we obtain residuals. Now these residuals ensure that we are taking out all the variation in female applicant share, which occurs due to job characteristics or, or due to the occupation or state. We then use the residuals as dependent variable to estimate a ridge regression model with the uh, scores for word unigrams. Uh, so again, this ridge regression model is also a machine learning model. Uh, we obtain a coefficient for every word and the interpretation of that coefficient would be the marginal effect of that, the presence of that word on female applicant share. And the word list so obtained can be useful to researchers for designing policy experiments, especially in the Indian context, and also to practitioners who might want to think about how to rephrase job ads in order to improve participation of women, uh, especially in contexts where you can't explicitly make a mention that you have a preference for women. Uh, how am I doing on time? You're okay, I guess. Uh, if you could wrap it up in, you know, like three, four minutes, then we could have uh, some questions from the audience. Okay, great. Okay, great. So then, then now focusing on which words directly matter for female applicant share. Then again, I mean, beauty related skills they matter a lot, but then there are legal legal jobs as well where women apply more, uh, and then. There is some overlap between hard skills uh, compared to the, the stereotypes held by employers, but that overlap doesn't seem to be perfect. Uh, again, when it comes to male uh, skills, which basically decrease female applicant share. Uh, so for example, the presence of Python decreases uh, female applicant share by around 11.5%, uh, quantitative skills, machine learning, all these words reduce female applicant share, even in neutral jobs. Uh, then when it comes to soft skills, uh, again, women are more likely to apply to jobs which require coordinating, uh, which have language skills. Uh, and men are more likely to apply to jobs which require engaging uh, the clients, pitching, negotiating. Uh, so that's quite interesting. And then when it comes to personality and appearance related traits, here we see that the overlap between the stereotypes held by employers and the employees uh, and the willingness to uh, apply for the employees, that, that changes. So women now want to apply to jobs which require being ethical, resourceful, motivated, determined, proactive, zeal, responsive. So, and when it comes to things like smiles, that the presence of word smile, or tone or being adaptive or keen, that, that reduces female applicant share. Uh, in terms of job flexibility, there's a very strong uh, uh, overlap between employer and employee, uh, employee perceptions. So women prefer to jobs which have uh, work from home and uh, which, which have uh, uh, weekdays working only and weekends off. Uh, while on the other hand, the male jobs ha are associated with the men respond, uh, the female applicant share reduces when the job involves night shift, traveling, or uh, re relocation. So what we learned out of this is that uh, in, in general, the Indian labor market is characterized by low female labor force participation rate and gender pay gap. And we find that women are willing to pay for attributes such as job flexibility and apply more in presence of stereotypical female skills. So the question that arises whether legal bans are sufficient to reduce uh, or eliminate gender market segregation, labor market segregation. Uh, 
so we we find that legal bans the interpretation of our results will be that legal bans on gender requests they can narrow gender segregation in applicant pool but they are unlikely to eliminate it as long as stereotypes exist uh, so stereotypes matter when young people are entering the labor market and can can have important cumulative consequences for future labor market returns and the word list that we obtain that can be used to rephrase job ads to enable improving women's participation so thanks suga so we have time now for some questions so are there questions from the audience so can i ask a question sonal did um sure so i was wondering uh, you're talking about labor force participation rate but here the data is simply job ads and uh, applicants right so we don't actually know what was the outcome of the job ad so it is possible that you know out of 10 applicants nine of them are women and uh, one person uh, the the person who actually gets the job is a man right so i'm wondering how are you commenting on uh, labor force participation when you're simply looking at application data so labor force participation is not whether someone gets a job or not it's basically more aligned with whether someone chooses to participate in the labor market or not so it basically our analysis indicates what kind of barriers are there for women in labor market even though the women on this portal are there in the labor force but the words and the overall the entire analysis when you extrapolate that that kind of shows that okay this is also an important consideration uh, the phrasing or the particular job characteristics they are also sort of important in determining how comfortable women feel with certain job attributes uh does that make sense so yeah we, yeah we don't have call back data but labor force participation rate is not uh, it's different from being employed or unemployed yeah but there was a regression where you had the the log wage and the log wage square right so there uh, basically the wage you're looking at is basically the expected wage not the actual wage right it's the posted wage it's uh, the posted wage by the employer which is associated with uh, gender request okay thank you if i could also step in uh, thank you sugat thank you very much thank you um so i'll i'll try and frame my uh, question as a statement and and you must forgive me for that and i'll just put a question mark at the end so yeah. i want some help trying to figure out how do i place the initial results so my and here's where my line of thinking uh, works if i am a job poster mm -hmm. i want to post attributes on that poster that allows people in the job market to self select in the most clear possible way right exactly now if that is the case i will draw on all sorts of things i mean marketing people draw on stereotypes but it seems that if the stereotypes has been put as this terrible thing that we must look at as you know bad things but that's something that almost everybody uses if you want to target better without having certain target information if that is the case the first part uh, uh, before the classification of words that you use, uh, that you do using the lime algorithm the results before that seem to be essentially a test of your machine learning algorithm whether it can predict the degree to which the ad was well targeted or not and if you could tell me what am i getting wrong there or if i got it right so the part uh, so this femaleness could capture both the things whether an ad is targeted or not targeted uh, right so let's say an employer wants some skill such as python which is non negotiable and they really don't care which gender comes into that job but if python is associated with men rather than women then the maleness of that job it will naturally be higher so it's not true that in all the neutral jobs but that's a question that you can't answer using the information that you have correct Python exactly it might be associated with maleness or femaleness for a variety of options made at the undergraduate education level by these students which might exactly. be driven by a variety of social factors exactly so data by itself cannot distinguish essentially what you can say is this helps them target it better 
why does it help them target it better could be uh, because of a bunch of choices driven by you know gender norms or uh, whatever ideas but i'm trying to understand whether the fundamental test so femaleness and maleness are the results of your machine learning algorithm yeah and what your results show is that they do a reasonably good job in predicting that if something is associated with femaleness according to this particular machine learning algorithm you are likely to get higher female applicants which means in essence what you, what you can show concretely everything else is a little up in the air is that the algorithm is pretty good at detecting what targets females better and what targets male better the, so essentially the, the algorithm can be used by an hr department for instance uh so in order to sort of uh i i'll i mostly agree with the point you are making but then i slightly disagree with certain parts of that point because you know you don't so the second part which directly looks at this uh thing that which words matter directly for female applicants here this directly tells the hr department that which what words do you want to use to target men and women right now this analysis the other analysis which uses the how applicant share response to those stereotypes that sort of shows the overlap between employer and employee perceptions of femaleness or maleness with a job right because the the variable on uh, which is used to predict that is the employer side of the bias so that shows the alignment between employer and employee stereotypes i'm so for instance i was i was able to follow the entire argument until you said employer bias i'm not sure which part of this is categorized as bias given that what you're doing essentially is taking an ad and trying to figure out if it is better targeted or can it be categorized as more female or more male what is the bias part i mean bias means a misfit right but here what you're testing is actually fit well essentially uh, what i'm saying is that employer association rather than bias so bias might not be the correct word the associations held by employers in the market at large i hope that that makes it clear fair enough and one small quick question i'm sorry to uh, yeah. take so much of your time no Could it's you interesting put the slide slide right yeah. before this one so the one on uh, hard skills and soft skills yeah right this one now i know that the idea is to distinguish these words but i'm yeah. sure that you're already aware that there is quite large overlaps i mean python is a software yeah and it seems as if and i mean this particular case it might seem as if that you use the superset then it's more female but if you use as i say more specific skills then it might be more male but that's not true if you come to soft skills where say something like communicate or coordinate is has a very high degree of overlap with say uh, meeting with clientele or articulate or read and what i'm struggling with then is that in in slightly different context because this is a national level job portal right right which means that and particularly because english is second or third language for almost everybody in india with you know some uh, notable exceptions essentially small changes in context could mean that these words are read differently in different parts of the country and i'm not sure how much of that shows up because it's it's not as if that they're cleanly delineated so there's not the old mm. concept of you know hard hardware um things are men and you know software is uh, is uh, is women yeah. and it would be very interesting to see if you can also i mean take this further so i find this part way more interesting mm. and uh, take it further to figure out what the degree of overlap is and what what explains this yeah um I hope I I'm able to communicate what I have in mind. But yeah, yeah, yeah is, we we are we are actually we are actually uh, working on trying to work on this kind of thing. So, but but I mean, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, that, but this is for a future project. Here here it's much more simpler than that. It, we're basically you know starting to explore this area again. This using the these sort of techniques and this framework is novel. So. we have to start somewhere and then we can dig deeper and deeper but thanks for the suggestion i agree uh, thanks a lot again so any more questions you 
use the, you know, raise your hand. That is a way of signaling. If somebody doesn't signal that, I think we have to assume. Hi, Sugat, can I just one uh, question? I'm sorry, uh, the sort of building up on Vatsalya's point about sort of doing something in terms of, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm not really, a, uh, you know, uh, I really do machine learning, but uh, I was just wondering if you can do factor loadings on these words and so on. Uh, and on that topic, I mean, there's some things that don't make sense. Why is it that the word Bengali is associated with a higher female uh, application share? What, what is, why is that? Uh, I mean, I, I just say that it's hard to, you know, exactly tell why there's a reason for that. Maybe I can't, I can't really say individually for specific, specific uh, word as to, so if you look at Telugu, it's uh, associated negatively related, negatively related. Uh, English skills are positively related. Positively related uh, yeah. the things jump around. Yeah, partly it could be that uh, different, it, it partly could capture some biases uh, in different regions of India. Uh, so, for example, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's really hard to sort of pinpoint this thing that why Bengali is is in increases female applicant share while Telugu decreases. But so then, I think it's a good point. And if, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Well, it's not just Bengali. I mean, you know, you have Marathi, and I mean, there's a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's a lot of stuff uh, uh, going on here. Okay, thanks, thanks. Um, uh, Sukat, I, I wonder. I mean, uh, this is all ads in English, right? But, right. Uh, but in India, a lot of ads are in the vernacular. Uh, so it will be in Tamil, in Kannada, in Bengali, and so on. Yeah. Um, I, and I wonder whether you know this will carry over uh, this the, the, this algorithm and these techniques um, will carry over and make sense um, if you used another language other than English. Yeah. So the the models are basically. Uh, NGRA models used in this case. These are the simplest models. They don't necessarily use uh, outside information or transfer learning. So transfer learning basically uses an outside kind of information. But in this case, the results are just based on word unigrams, bigrams, and trigrams. So when suppose suppose there's a set of job ads which only have Bengali in them. In that case, uh, you will get a set of words in Bengali. And I mean, I can get them right away. Uh, the only problem is that I don't know how to read Bengali. So, but but using the same methods, you can get a word list in any language. The slight problem arises when job ads are there in multiple languages. So then the interpretation parts part becomes dif difficult. The algorithm will still work, but let's say there's a uh, word for legal, which is written in English, and then the word is written in Bengali. Uh, so the same word can have multiple versions, and then it could be hard to have interpretations on, on them in terms of average score. But that's the only issue that there is. But the method will work for any language, whether, uh, whether we as humans know it or not. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, but, I, but you know, I was thinking of, you know, one of the popular ways of uh, people pointing out that uh, artificial intelligence cannot substitute um, human uh, grasp is is with Google Translate, yeah. uh, right? Because, you know, because the, the, the program is, is actually derived from a basic language uh, which presumably Google used English uh, mm. as the foundation. Mm. Um, and then of course claims that you could translate other languages, but then you then run into difficulty because if you use Google translate and translate uh, something from uh, Tamil into English. And then you try to take the English word and translate it back. 
um, mm. it gets the gender wrong. Um, mm. So, or if there is a gender signifier, as in the case of Chinese, um, you will not have that problem. So, so there are some limitations on, on how uh, the program uh, is initially uh, laid out, isn't it? Actually, you know, this, this paper does not use that kind of analysis, but there is a problem of bias in the machine learning literature. So the translation thing that we're talking about that uses uh, an algorithm called Vertuvec or, or certain kinds of embedding algorithm, which scores the entire internet and they get whether the same word occurs in a particular context or not. So, you know, when you're, uh, when you're uh, just going through the entire web scrape or you're looking at Twitter feeds and everything and getting the embeddings. Embedding is basically a vector for every word. When you get that embedding, that captures the human biases. So then if the people on Twitter are biased or if people on Reddit are, are biased, uh, if the people on the common crawl and the entire internet are biased, so then the model will start to capture that uh, those kind of biases. So for example, there's a famous example uh, in one of the word embedding algorithm, which basically it was given a analogy related task and it showed that doctor is to man as nurse is to women, woman. So when your training data is biased, then the model captures these biases. In our case, the training data uh, uses job portal data. And so these biases captured are based on the gender preferences of the employers. All right, so, so th th that in a sense should answer Vatsalya's question about what do you mean by bias in this context? I mean- I, I kind of use bias in a loose sense in this case, because yes. you know, I, I agree with Vatsalya's point, by the way. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anybody else? I think we've um, um, come to the end. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. Um, you know, th this is, a, I have to compliment you for um, clarity in presentation. I mean, you know, not, not all of us um, are familiar with or work in these kinds of things. So to hold uh, the attention of someone like me uh, for as long as you did um, is, is, um, uh, compliment to you. So thank you. <laughs> That's really great to hear. And thanks a lot. I enjoyed presenting this paper a lot. Thanks. So Shonali, you want to say a word? No, you've said it all. It was a very nice presentation. Absolutely new to me. The area so it's, it's interesting. And uh, thank you, Sugat, for that. Thank you. So thank you then. Thank you. Th and thanks to IT, uh, Manimala, all those who helped make this happen. Um, and um, we'll be in touch. Thank Great. you. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Zohar, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful talk. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.